If you've been following this channel or my Twitch channel, I'm sure you'll have heard me talk at some point about the computer that I use for my streaming, for my video editing, and for working from home since lockdown. Um, it's a PC that sat on my bedroom shelf for seven years until I realised why am I struggling with my underpowered main PC when this one that sat on a shelf doing nothing is actually far more powerful. And it was already more powerful before I started upgrading it. I've gone from 4GB to 16GB of RAM. It's gained a graphics card because it actually never had one in the first place. It only had the onboard graphics. I went a bit mad on extra hard disks. And I upgraded the processor. And actually a friend at the time told me mm, cooling might start to become an issue actually now that you've upgraded the processor i thought well maybe maybe but i thought well, i'll try it and I'll, I'll see i'll see how i get on with the stock cooler it came with um because well it's the only one i had that's the main reason uh, but yeah it wasn't designed for the upgraded processor it was designed for the processor it came with which is an intel i3-3220 dual core processor and uh, the one i put in was a quad core intel i7-3770 and uh, yeah difference in uh, tdps as well tdp is a measure of how much heat it gives out basically thermal design power and uh, the old processor was just to give you a guide 55 watts and the new one was 77 watts and um, this cooler was designed for the 55 watts and i bought the new processor second hand but if i bought it new it would have come with an upgraded cooler with probably some copper in the middle here uh, whereas this one's all aluminium, so it's just not quite as good. It, it worked okay. It did okay. It did actually work okay for a while. Um, but then I started running video editing, and uh, the new processor came with a turbo mode, which I didn't even twig before. I just thought, oh, right. My motherboard's always supported turbo mode, but the old processor didn't have turbo mode on it. The new one did. So suddenly, once I kicked into a video edit, the whole thing literally went like a turbo engine uh, you know the front fan spun up to full this thing gave as much as it could at, at full speed and the processor started getting up to like 60 degrees celsius 70 degrees celsius 80 degrees celsius started getting very very close to 90 degrees and it's been a while i know my way around the inside of a computer but it has been a while since i built a computer or upgraded one like, I'm used to processors that get to 60 degrees Celsius being you know, like there's something wrong. Shut it down. 60 degrees Celsius is too hot. Uh, so when it started hitting 90, I was panicking a bit. And I was just like, okay, turn it off, turn it off. Did some research. Uh, found out actually the throttle down temperature for this particular processor is 95 degrees Celsius, i.e. The, the temperature at which it thinks it's getting too hot. So I thought, okay. And, uh, and the same research also revealed that it could get up to 105 degrees Celsius without you know without it being a complete disaster and i thought well yeah yeah you say that that's not very reassuring to me i prefer my processors not to be able to boil water of their own <laughs> of their own flesh so um yeah i i thought okay it's getting to the point now where i might have to look into a new cooler but i was putting it off as long as i could because i didn't want the faff of having to pull you know i mean you have to pull the leads out of the way anyway but these ones the you know the stock coolers that the processors will come with these can be put on from the top so you don't actually have to you have to undo enough leads to be able to get to it it has to be on a safe you know <laughs> solid surface and you have to get some stuff out of the way but you can put this down and pull it out without having to undo the motherboard whereas the aftermarket coolers the ones that you know, essentially are made by other people other than intel um they need you to pull the motherboard out, turn it upside down, screw the things on from the bottom. And I just thought, oh, that's a lot of a faff if I don't really need to. If this one's if this one's doing an okay job, I'll just leave it. Uh, but then I ran another program one day and it used the whole processor power, kicked into turbo mode, all the fans on full speed, and it was starting to rocket towards 94, 95 degrees Celsius. I thought, no, 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 no. Because I'd bought this processor second hand, as I mentioned, and it arrived in pristine condition. It's obviously been really well kept. So I thought, what a shame it would be if this processor that's been so well kept by the previous owner gets run into the ground by me just because I can't be bothered to unscrew a motherboard. So I thought, right, come on, let's plump for it. And the one I plumped for was this one, the Silverstone AR11. Now, I'd seen a few different ones recommended, uh, but some of them had very odd shapes. They looked very top heavy, bits sticking out everywhere. And I thought, well, maybe then I should just go for one that's the same height as the stock cooler because there's a bit more clearance but obviously the taller the cooler the 
closer it's going to be to that power supply. Uh, so this one was recommended because it's very, very similar size to the Intel stock cooler. It's pretty much the same size. It's obviously, you know, one circular, one square. The Silverstone's a little bigger. It's a piece of art as well. I mean, look at it. I think I spent more time taking photos of it and trying to do cinematic runs like this than I actually took to install the thing. Look, look at it. It's just amazing. I mean, right, from some angles it looks like a fridge, and it should, but from this angle, it's just incredible. And I won't see this when the whole thing gets put together, I'll never see that again. So, uh, okay, anyway, I'm letting myself get distracted, let's uh, clean off the old heatsink paste, which actually, you know, that thermal paste isn't really that old, but I'm just using a tissue just to get most of it off, and then a cotton bud with IPA on it just to clean off the bits that were left, and uh, then I thought, right, it'll be sensible to just put the cooler on it just to try it for size and make sure it fits and everything, and this is where um, I started getting a sort of heart in mouth moment because it was a bit wobbly and I thought um, am I doing something wrong here? Oh, it must just be the wrong way around although I felt stupid even trying this because it's like well it shouldn't really matter which way around it goes but I tried it and I thought oh, this is still a bit wobbly what's going on what have I done you know that I've never fitted an aftermarket cooler before that's the point so I didn't know whether this was normal or whether I just fouled up looking at the specs, said I got the wrong size. I mean, I thought, oh, I'll just turn the motherboard upside down, maybe that's what it is, but no, that's still wobbly wobbly. And I was starting to panic a bit now, so I thought, right, I'll, I'll just seat it and have a look around, have a close look at where all the components are in case there's a component pushing up on it and causing it to be unbalanced. And I couldn't find anything, the capacitors seemed to be clear of it, snug, certainly, but... Uh, Everything seemed to be clear of it, just, it just wouldn't sit properly. And it, it was just wobbling about all over the place. Turned out the answer was to have a cuppa. Because, I mean, you know, the cuppa wasn't the solution, obviously. But the cuppa was the excuse to get up and walk away from it and just have a think. Uh, let common sense take hold. Because I realised then, hang on, you haven't looked at the screws properly. They're not normal screws. Maybe you're thinking about this the wrong way. Maybe it's not that the cooler has to go all the way down and sit flush. Maybe the cooler's meant to go down through the holes a little bit and the screws are meant to come up through the holes a little bit and somehow they meet in the middle or maybe meet two thirds of the way up or however it is anyway. But then when I looked, I thought, yeah, that makes much more sense now. See, the way that it's designed, the screw thread's not meant to go all the way through the motherboard from the cooler all the way down and sit flush. Uh, so with that renewed confidence, I thought, okay, let, let's just go for it. Come on, let's do it. It'll work. It'll be fine. Uh, the thing that's different about this cooler than any other cooler I've owned are the, the heat pipes. So I thought, well, normally I'd do the pea-sized dot of thermal paste. That's generally the way you should go. But I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll make it a, a line rather than a dot, just purely because these are linear, these, these copper heat pipes. Right thinking not quite the right application. So if you're watching this right now, this bit right now, don't take this as a tutorial. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't work out perfectly. But anyway, we had to try it out. I didn't know then that this wasn't going to work. So let's pretend that we've gone back in time. I'm trying it out for the first time and I'm putting the cooler on the top. Now, again, with these aftermarket coolers, because you have to turn the motherboard upside down to screw it in, it's a bit finicky then to hold it on. Again, it's good practice with the heatsink paste to allow it to spread out naturally when you press the cooler down. And of course, when you turn it upside down, gravity's kind of working against you and you're having to try and hold the cooler against the board and not let it come apart and go back together again because that could introduce air bubbles into the paste and unevenness. Uh, so, you know, that might have been a factor in what was about to happen as well, but... Uh, with it all screwed down, it was level. All my worries about it being wobbly were gone. It was perfectly secure and it was it was it was fine. None of the components looked like they were jammed up against it. Again, it was snug. I I'll I'll definitely say it was snug. But there was plenty of clearance for the graphics cards, plenty of clearance to other things, and yeah, it, it, it all seemed okay, so it was time to get it back into the case and of course the reverse faff of getting the motherboard back in and getting it past the I.O. board, the I.O. filter at the back and um, oh, 
Morfaf. Everybody will know this pain of getting the, the power connectors back. But there we are. It was time to just turn it on. Uh, make sure everything that was spinning that should be spinning, including the new cooler. And yep, yeah, that was all fine. The idle temperatures seem to be okay as well. So I thought, right, it's safe to proceed. Let's boot it up properly. And that's when it got a little bit... Mm, it's like... These temperatures aren't particularly excessive, but the case is wide open and something just didn't feel right. I just had a hunch it was too hot and I hadn't even got the computer doing anything of substance. So it was back open again. Uh, that was a waste of the thermal paste, but actually no. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I opened it back up. My hunch was right. Look at it. I mean, it doesn't look too bad on the processor, but on the on the cooler that is terrible it's only doing half a job only half of the heat pipes are actually have actually got any thermal paste on them uh, so yeah let's let's I mean, <laughs> it's a terrible job and i did it if i say so myself look at the difference between how it spread on the old processor the, or the old heat sink rather and the new heat sink it just wasn't the right way to do it at all so I had a look at some forums and uh, some people commented yeah with these heat pipe ones what we'd advise is for you to do uh, you know, to apply a line of heat sink paste on the cooler rather than on the processor and apply a line on each heat pipe. I thought well that seems to make sense and, and, and I'm not going for neatness here I'm just going for continuity for continuousness whatever the right way of saying it is. Uh, start to finish no stopping on each heat pipe It'll spread itself out, so it doesn't really matter if it's any even, but it would matter if I just stopped. And another reply on the forum said, what I do is I do the, the pea-sized lump, uh, but I do one in the middle and one in each of the four corners. So I sort of went with the hybrid. I thought, well, I've got loads of paste on the cooler itself, so I'll do a less than pea-sized amount uh, in that sort of X shape, and we'll, we'll go with that. Put the cooler back on. I'd had a bit of practice by this point as well, so I was a bit more adept at holding it onto the board without it wobbling about, and getting the board upside down, screwing it all back together. Still a bit nervous about doing this, and, and, and you should be nervous. Uh, do take care when doing this. Do make sure that you've grounded yourself first before working on this, all your anti-static protection and all that. So I normally tap the side of a grounded PC case, just to, you know, grounded as in just plugged into the mains but not switched on, um, just to de-statify yourself, if that's the right way of saying it. And yeah, let's cross our fingers and much, much better, much better. It may look like only a few degrees difference to you, but it just felt right. And uh, it's been working great ever since, so I can highly recommend it. And since I recorded that bit, I found an extra setting in the BIOS to change the fan profile from standard to turbo. And it's even better than great. It's keeping the low load temperatures in the 50s and full whack video rendering is now below 80 degrees Celsius. Pretty incredible.